Now we're going to take the program we made that displays the gyro values to the driver station and upgrade it so that it controls a servo using those gyro values. We're only going to use a Z accumulated value for this. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the heading and the rate of rotations. I added some comments into this program after the last video, so it looks a little different, that's why, but everything else should be the same. I'm going to move this down underneath the gyro because it has to do with the gyro, and then that way I can put all my servo stuff up here. Now if you scroll down, you'll see there's some red text, and this red is all errors. And that had to do with that stuff we just deleted. We're also not going to be using this stuff. So it, all those red lines, you can delete these as well, and this guy. Now we're going to make a servo. So we need to make an instance of that servo. So let's say we have a servo. And you'll see that since I uh, use a smart select uh, drop down it had, that automatically put this import in. That's good. Uh, if not, you'll have to type that in there. Servo, I'm just going to call it servo. I'm going to then have to tell the, ser the, the program where the servo is on the robot. So I'm going to say servo equals hardware map dot servo dot get and I just named it servo in my configuration file. Then I'm going to have an integer just like I have an int for Z accumulated. I'm going to have one for the servo position. Actually this is going to be a double. Now you're probably thinking, but Colton, 127 is way too big for a server position. Because yes, Android Studio, or at least the FTC SDK, uses server positions between 0 and 1. Uh, that's, that's true. So the last thing we're going to do before we put this into the set position is we're going to divide it by 255. So this will come out by a 0 0.5. It will be right in the middle. Uh, we're going to do this so we don't get as much rounding errors. Um, to, to stay true so that we have the same concepts uh, with servo. So we're going to be using a value between 0 and 255, and then we're going to convert it to what the FTC SDK wants right before we feed it to the set position. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest going to modernroboticsedu.com and go to the core control modules overview. We have a servo um, controller class or lesson on there where you can learn about what I'm talking about there. So that's good. We have the gyro sensor. We have the Mount Robotics I2C gyro that we talked about last time. Uh, we will also have to tell it where the gyro is. Again, I'm going to put that up all in this block for this program uh, so that all that stuff is together. So that's all from last time. That was all old. The first thing we're going to do in the program inside the uh, initialization, so this is what happens when you hit init up until wait for start. First thing we're going to physically do is set the server position. So we're going to say servo dot set position. We're going to set the position to the servo position variable which is currently 127 divided by 255 because there's 255 positions that a servo can possibly go to. Next we're going to add in some telemetry data so we're going to say telemetry dot add data we're going to add a line that is servo and we're going to print what the servo position is. And we're going to do this two times. We're going to print uh, what the value is we're giving set position. We're also going to give, uh, we're going to print the value between 0 and 255. So for this, we'll just say that's just server position, not divided by 255. I'm struggling with what I can call these to differentiate each other. I've got servo value, servo position, but just know that this top one servo is going to be what's actually going to be fed to the servo here, 
and this is going to be the value between 0 and 255. The next thing we're going to do is we will calibrate, but first we're going to wait. We're going to um, sleep for one second. And that is because if the servo moves and the servo then bumps the gyro and then the gyro is still moving while it starts to calibrate, then it's not good. So we're going to wait one second, make sure the, the gyroscope is not being bumped, and then uh, we'll start calibration. So we start calibration, we wait for start, and then we ensure the gyro has finished calibrating. This is looking kind of empty now, so we're going to add more meat and potatoes to the main loop of our program. We, just like last time, we're going to set the z-accumulated uh, variable to be what's coming from the gyro sensor. And then we're going to set the position, we're going to, we're going to calculate what the server position should be. So we're going to say server position is, uh, and this is coming from that video, the intro video we had uh, that, that talked about this math. Server position is going to be 255 plus z accumulated times 128 divided by 90. Now we're going to tell the server position to go to the position at this variable. So we'll say servo dot set position we're going to range clip to make sure to make sure that the servo is not fed a position uh, outside of 0 to 1 if it does if you feed it negative 1 or 1.1 1 .1, the um, it will throw an error and stop the program so we definitely don't want that and now to get this we need to import uh, this guy. So if we click on this, it should automatically put up here import com, Qualcomm, robot core until range, which is awesome. And we'll say range dot clip. We're going to clip the servo position. And remember what I was saying before is that the first thing or the last thing we do before we feed the value is divide by 255. And we're going to clip it between 0 and 1. That will be the extremes of that number. Forgot a comma there. The last thing we need to do is display the, the um, values. We have some of it here. So we have z accumulated, which is good. We're also going to display the servo positions. So this guy is going to be number one. Number two is going to be the Servo position divided by 255. You can also copy it from up here if you like. Um, in fact, I'm going to do that. Right here, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it right in there. So that's what we want to be. I'm going to put in a 2 so it comes in out in this order. And 3. I'm going to go up to code and say reformat code. Run. I'll move anything around if we've got a space to make it look pretty. So it's nice and easy to read. The next thing to put in would be comments. So comment in here what these things are doing. You can say this is our calculation to convert degrees to server position. This is converting server position to the server position that SDK wants, and then clipping the range, and then sending that position to the servo. This is displaying our variables. Um, so those comments are going to be very good so that when you look back at your code down the road a few months from now or if someone else has to look at your code, they know what you're doing. Okay, download the program, test it out. Maybe you did too. I hope you download this and test it out. And I wonder if anyone can figure out my, my, my mistake because instead of going right in the middle like it did in the intro video, it's now all the way on the left. And because it's, I put in 255 here as addition instead of 127 times 128 divided by 90 up here, 255, those are correct. Uh, so that should work. Hopefully you caught that mistake. If you did, kudos to you.
There, that works much better. 